What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Grand Chancellor. I'm Arrow Bushels. With me is Mike Delia. All right, Mike, how are you? How's everything today? I'm doing good. So what's today's wonderful topic about? Well, just as uh, we did yeah, uh, last time, uh, we're going to be spitballing it. Okay, so cool. I like this. I'd say modern art, probably. All right, oof. Good, nice. You've no, been to the MoMA, right? Ta- I've been to the MoMA. I've been to the Louvre. I've been to many museums. I've been to uh, the one that was a train station in France. Oh, that's the uh, I'll, I'll, no, no, no. I'd... You know which I'm talking about. Yeah, two. Yeah. Yeah. I've been. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. A, I would. I wouldn't say I'm an expert in art, but like I have. I've had a great experience with art in my life. Mm. I dated mean, an art student. Dating an art student right now. So yeah. Mm. Exciting. You one would say. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, side check on all that. So, modern art. Are we talking about contemporary or post contemporary? Conceptual. Well, there's, no, there's no such thing as post contemporary, but I mean there 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 is in a way if you look at it like the if if you look at a lot of the stuff that came out of the seventies, uh a rumpled up bed, a pile of bricks, uh cans of artist feces, mm-hmm. which I think they're all in Italy. But uh, there was one that was called Fur and Cup. I think it was Oppenheimer. Not the guy. Uh, there was an artist named Oppenheimer. Mm. I never heard of him. So just want to contact you, everyone. Neither of us are art majors. We're the furthest thing from an art major, actually. One would say. Yes. I'm a history major, technically. And Mike, what is your major? I'm criminal justice. Oh, no, I think I had Oppenheimer written art. Right, something with Oppenheimer, but it was pretty much a legit toilet seat. Oh, are you talking about Duchamp's uh, urinal? Yeah, I think so, maybe. Uh, or, as he called it, the fountain? Maybe, uh, maybe. It was a urinal, uh, and it was given a false signature, R. Mutt. Yes, I think that's what I'm thinking of. I don't know why I got Oppenheimer from... Oh, maybe I'm thinking Fur and Cup, maybe. I've never heard of Fur and Cup. Let me check. I'm, I know I know what I'm thinking. Of. I know... I can see in my head I'm maybe in the name wrong. Anyway, make your point. Yeah, I, I don't know what my point is. <laughs> Yeah, oh, Merit, uh, uh, this is this is what I'm talking about. Merit Oppenheim. Mer- Oppenheim, not Oppenheimer. My bad, guys. If this uh, wasn't created by the guy who invented the atomic bomb, well... Good on you. Definitely definitely dropped a bomb in my brain. A, f- a furry freaking teacup. Wow. Yeah, imagine getting that wet and trying to eat from it. Ew. I mean, a lot of, a lot of the stuff uh, is sort of... Stemming from, well, a more subjectivization. Like, uh, there's a multitude of answers for this whole idea of beauty. Like, you can't compare uh, your furry cup to something like the Pieta or uh, the the more enlightenment, uh, well, romantic artist, uh, Caspar David Friedrich. Mm -hmm. Uh, I actually have... uh, the wanderer above the sea of fog in my room, and it's 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 very interesting. I have the great wave in my dorm. Hmm. One of my favorite art pieces ever in history, I would say. That or the Medusa. The Medusa. Yes. Interesting. Yes, very interesting tale behind that. Not me, but like I like the tale behind the painting and how like I've seen it in person. It's magnificent. It's huge. Maybe bigger than this room we're in right now. But like. It's just the emotions I just feel from it, and just the coloring, and just it's just so raw and beautiful. I love it. One of my favorites has to be uh, oh, Michael close. by Guido Reni. Which one is that one? Uh, that is the picture of uh, Saint Michael the Archangel uh, down in the depths of hell with a spear oh, over yes, over yes. the head of Satan. Yes. And that is one of the greatest triumphs of represents one of the greatest triumphs of good over evil, mm. and the now, detail. The, what is the context 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 uh, behind that painting for the viewers? Uh, I would say that there there's sort of power in that uh, we see the uh, overwhelming struggle that is for the most part, eternal struggle between good and evil. Mm. And it's sort of culminated into that particular painting, especially with all the the detailing of the surroundings, uh, the sort of 
post rebellion def uh, deformation of Lucifer and that's about uh, the majority of what I could say for that painting interesting okay um, and uh, well you can't really beat any of the uh, paintings in the Sist Sistine Chapel never s I've, I've seen I know what the Sistine Chapel is I've, uh, I've heard it's breathtaking though and I know the story of behind of, of what it is and yeah. behind it too. And there's also, I mean, when it comes to the Sistine Chapel, one of the, the the one of the best has to be the largest one in the Sistine Chapel, and that is the Final Judgment. Is that the one where like the two people are about to touch each other? No, that's uh, the Creation of Adam. Uh, creation of okay. Uh, it's this is the largest part of the uh, Sistine Chapel. I can't go into. The majority of it, uh, I, I can't go into all of the details uh, because, well, it's a huge painting. Mm. But one of the most interesting parts about uh, that was Michelangelo's portrayal of St. Bartholomew. Mm. So if you know the story of St. Bartholomew, he was, uh, he was skinned alive Jesus. in India. Why? Because he converted the king's brother. Oh, okay. Uh... And the king got pissed off, and he wanted him to suffer in the most horrible way possible. But that is the only saint in the painting that is fully recognizable. What do you mean, like fully, like fully you can see, like the biggest guy there? Or? Uh, recognizable as in you don't know who the other saints are. Um, that they're not clearly... Uh, defined. They're not clearly defined. So... The relevance of St. Bartholomew is sort of a reflection of Michelangelo, his sort of uh, sufferings in life, that if you were to, uh, I think there's a Charlton Heston movie about the life of Michelangelo, but, I mean, it might be Charlton Heston, it might be somebody, somebody else, but Michelangelo was a very tortured soul. Yes. And that sort of reflection in St. Bartholomew is sort of his sort of expression of how he perceived himself. So. Interesting. Okay. But at this, in the same vein, you can't really say that there's any sort of metaphysical, uh, not metaphysical, uh, any sort of substantial detailing that makes any sort of beauty out of a rumpled up bed and i'm referring to uh tracy emmons my bed mm -hmm. uh tracy emmons she is she is a basket case um she also wrote she also created a work of art uh which is basically a tent with a bunch of names on the inside and the title of the piece is the people i've slept with so you could you could you could basically tell what kind of a uh, mm -hmm. person she is, um, and yeah, when a lot of her art was presented, she was asked the question, "Why, uh, why is it art? Why is it art?" And her answer was, "Because I say it's art." I'm sorry, but on whose authority do you? draw back on in order to say that this is well what specific? makes anything art to begin yeah. with first of all so she does have a point yeah i mean she does she does have a point but at the end of the day if you were to ask uh any sort of pre-enlightenment artist or academic or uh literary genius like say uh burke dostoevsky mm -hmm. uh herman melville what the purpose of art, music, or literature would be, and that would be a uh, sort of beauty. Yeah, maybe it's, but be isn't beauty different be for everyone, though? Like, being clean, like, cheesy. Yeah, I mean, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But, like, so for one person, maybe it's not physic not maybe, like, physically appealing to you, but maybe it's, like, the message is beautiful, or the undertones of what it is is beautiful. Or yeah. It's just... Maybe it's beauty in a different sense that we cannot grasp or understand. Like an idea is uh, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, like a beautiful idea. Like one can also say like music. Mu there's a lot of like, yeah. you know, music is also an art of some sorts. Oh, no, it is an art. 
and there's good music that you know we like and enjoy, and there's bad music that we don't like. And maybe for us, it's bad. For others, it's beautiful. I mean, well, if you were to like sort of deconstruct all of the uh, sort of arts arts in general, you would just mo- mostly get uh, different shadings, patterns, and all of it's, that. Yeah, it's just a but, bunch of shadings and patterns that we and different noises that we just like together. But if you're drawing that much into it, anything could be art. Technically, that's but true, though. What is, is it, the purpose of art overall? Is it art to enti- like to trigger an emotion. To, make us to trigger an emotion, yes, but in a way, looking at what Burke called the sublime, uh, that which makes us feel small, insignificant, humbles us. Uh, a can of uh, a, a can of artists' crap is in no way, shape, or form beautiful, nor does it humble us. Rather, well, it just feeds into the uh, sort of pride of the artist himself. What is the, um, well, maybe the cr- crap of like the poop of cans could represent like the load of uh, the load of bull <laughs> that like, they're filled of, and maybe he's trying to humble themselves. So, like, listen, I know I'm full of, <laughs> but I understand that, and I'm trying to bring back to earth. Maybe it's just like the undertones that we don't fully recognize, like. Going back with the tent, maybe it's showing her, showing everyone that, like, maybe the girl or the guy that you sleep with that night, you're not the greatest. You're just another one in the name of the tent. Just another person showing you that like, you're insignificant. You're just another person they're just sleeping with. Well, at that point, it does sort of center around the artist, whereas if you were to look at uh, any sort of classical art, the the artist is really nowhere to be found except in the broad strokes of the thing as well as it, and even then so you're not even seeing the artist you're seeing the muse but whereas uh i'd say the artist takes more authority than the the uh artic, artistic piece itself mm. it's all about who's holding center stage as it were i mean somebody could say that oh uh the naruto shirt is the greatest thing mm. since apple pie. Well, I will will snap. <laughs> it is though. <laughs> but it doesn't necessarily make it true. I mean, I'd say the purpose of art is just to instill a sense of humility into the individual that uh sees it. Mm. Uh remind you that pride isn't everything, that you're not all that it's supposed to instill a sort of uh different perspective on the human experience. Such as, uh, oh, humans are capable of this. This sort of masterpiece, mm-hmm. this... This uh, amazing detailed work, this destruction of granite to a human. Mm-hmm. I believe that art, though, is n- not to be humble, but instead to evoke something within you, whether it be an emotion, a thought, or something, and let that... E- that that evocation, I don't know that's even a word, but being evocation, evocation, thank you, be within you to for you to do something or to think or trigger or to essentially snowball affect something. I feel like all art is essentially to evoke you of some sort of nature inside of you or of someone or something, and then you do with it what you want, and then who knows, maybe mm. more art will be made. But I think it's all about you. Again, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound like a broken record. Just evoking something, just something well, inside of you awaken. Well, that also uh, brings in a question: uh, what What is the value in shock value? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what is the value in vulgarity? Even in even to that point, is I mean, you could look at the story of Lenny Bruce, who's pretty much the 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 godfather of the modern day comedian. Um. And the things that he got arrested for in his life, nobody would get arrested for nowadays. Uh, but there's this big thing about words, and words have power. Very true. So do images. You say certain, you see, say certain words, see certain images, and it evokes a, a loud, overwhelming response that could just sometimes, you push the right buttons and there's chaos. Mm-hmm. So... And at the end of the day, you could point out some form of hypocrisy in it. Oh, I could uh, blow my nose on a tissue, stick it to the wall, and come back uh, 30 minutes later and there's people taking pictures of it. Could be. Who knows? (laughs) 
Again, eyes uh, are in the eye of the beholder, man. Yeah. Well, all right. Any final thoughts, Mike? Uh, any final thoughts, Albert? I feel like we'll never truly understand what art is because I feel like art is a very unique thing to humans. I feel like it's something humans have invented to express some sort of hidden thing within us or to express things that we don't know how to express yet mm. and in a way helps us spread our own messages universally yeah creativity is an outlet for the human experience exactly well everyone that's another episode of the grand chancellor thank you again mike so much for today's episode mike would you like uh to add anything any plugs or anything uh not really all right well thank everyone for listening to today's episode i'm albert and i'm signing off